Hello and welcome to the continuation of the Unleashing System Verilog and UVM video series. My name is James Chang. I am a senior staff instructor at Synopsys. If you have System Verilog knowledge and are interested in understanding the basic features of UVM, this series of videos are for you. UVM stands for Universal Verification Methodology. It is a methodology built on top of the System Verilog language and has been submitted to IEEE for official adoption. UVM focuses on reducing the verification coding effort and enhancing code reuse. For a high-level illustration of what these goals are all about, please take a look at the introduction video. To achieve these goals, UVM provides four service mechanisms, reporter, factory, configuration database, and a simulation execution manager. In order to understand UVM, you must understand how these mechanisms work. So let me show you how they work through a series of Hello World examples. In UVM, user messages are issued by using a macro called tickUVMInfo. The first argument of the macro is what's called an ID field. The second argument of the macro is the message that you want to print, in this case, Hello World. The third argument is the verbosity of the message. The purpose of the ID and the verbosity fields are explained in the UVM3 video. For this basic UVM discussion, we'll concentrate on just the message. In order to make use of the macro, you must import the UVM package. To have the macro executed, the macro needs to be embedded inside an initial block. And all of these need to be placed inside either a program block or a module. When simulated, the display message will show you that it is a UVM info message, where the code can be found, the simulation time, who printed the message, the ID of the message, then the message itself. So how does this work? As mentioned earlier, UVM provides four service mechanisms. These service mechanisms are enabled when you import the UVM package. The reporter class name is UVM report server. The factory class name is UVM Factory. The UVM Simulation Execution Manager class name is UVM Root. The Configuration Database class name is UVM Config DB. When you use the UVM Info macro, you are using the UVM Report Service mechanism. You can use this report mechanism in any code, including RTL, provided that the code has access to the UVM package. All right, so we saw that UVM report servers issue report messages for you. How about the other three service mechanisms? To illustrate them, we need to implement UVM tests. Let's move the hello world message from the initial block into a class derived from the UVM test base class and call this class hello world test. Within the class, the functionality of the test is embedded within a predefined UVM method called run phase. The run phase method will be executed automatically by the UVM simulation manager, UVM root, at simulation time zero. For UVM tests, think of the run phase method as UVM's version of SystemVelo's initial block. All UVM test classes are also required to be registered into the UVM factory through a macro and the associated constructor format. For more details on the UVM factory, please take a look at the UVM2 video of this series. To enable the UVM root to automatically execute the test for you, you need to call the run test method in the initial block. In this example, I'm going to compile this code with VCS. When running a UVM simulation, you will need to tell UVM root what test to run with a plus UVM test name switch. UVM root extracts the test class name from this runtime switch, uses the factory to construct the test object and call it UVM test top. Then execute the run phase method of the test at simulation time zero. The UVM info macro inside the run phase method then uses the UVM report server to print the message. Notice the name of the object issuing the message is called UVM test top. This is the name of the test object. Remember this name. This name will become very important we talk about the configuration database next. For now, 
Can you begin to see that in the execution of a test in UVM, a lot of work is done for you automatically? Once you adopt the UVM methodology, you'll find that the development of individual tests requires less coding effort due to these automations. What if you want to issue a different message? You can always write another test with a different message. Then, in simulation, choose a test with a plus UVM test name switch. The result of the new test will display the new message. But that's a lot of trouble to go through when you only want to make a small change. There is a better way, the configuration database. For an example on a configuration database, let's go back to the original Hello World code. And make some space for additional code. Instead of hot coding the hello world message, change the message to a string variable. In this example, the variable is called msg and initialized to hello world. In the run phase, retrieve the message from the configuration database via get method call. If there were no messages in the database, the variable will retain its original value, hello world. Compiling and simulating with the same set of switches produces the same result. But now we can use a UVM runtime switch to change the message to what we want for that simulation without writing another test. The UVM configuration database runtime switch requires three arguments. The first argument specifies the name of the UVM object that you want to configure. It must match the name of the object calling the get method. As mentioned previously, the name that UVM root gave to the test object was UVM desktop. The second argument is the entry key to the database. It must match the third argument of the get method. The retrieval from the database is based on this entry key. The last argument of the runtime switch is the value that you want to store in the database. The value that you store in the database will be retrieved by the get method if the target and the entry key matches, the result then shows up in the simulation display. This is only a trivial example of the power of the UVM configuration database. In real UVM test benches, the configuration database is a very powerful tool giving you the ability to set control value of any component of the UVM test bench from either the test or the runtime switch. In summary, UVM gives you a set of library-based classes along with four service mechanisms resulting in reduced verification coding effort and enhanced code reuse. This is the power of UVM. So, where should you go from here? This is how you can pace your journey into the System Verilog and UVM world. First, build a solid foundation in System Verilog. Then, become familiar with the UVM concepts. Finally, Pick up debugging techniques from your coworkers and friends. Synopsis can help you in building a solid foundation with hands on training. For verification, we have workshop with System Verilog Test Bench, Assertion, and UVM. In North America, our full time instructors have over 60 years of industry experience in design, verification, training, and participates in IEEE standard committees. We can also customize our offerings for your needs. For more information and to register for classes, visit this following website. This video is part of the series designed to give you an overview of what System Verilog and UVM are all about. Don't forget to watch the rest of the series. We're planning to release more videos in the coming month. Please give us your feedbacks and let us know what else you would like to learn in verification languages and methodologies. Thank you for watching.